Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my very first video of 2022. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the story of having my dream wedding dress created. So if you watched my wedding dress shopping video, I had shared that my dress was actually going to be customized and I'll share more about that process in this video. But several of you said that you would love to see a video just sharing that process of what custom a dress was like and so here we are sharing that story little did I know when I made that video what this process was going to entail because guys this is a crazy story but I really saw God's hand in it and so I'm excited to share with you I loved my wedding dress if you follow me on Instagram I've posted some pictures over there but I'll throw some up on the screen here too so you can see what it looks like it was everything I wanted, everything that I dreamed of, and I just truly felt so beautiful in this dress on my wedding day, which is something that I think every bride wants to feel. And so this story has a happy ending, but guys, getting there was not at all what I expected, and so let's just start from the beginning. we walk in and it's just this very small bridal salon and I explained to the guy who we had our appointment with who is actually the owner of the salon as well what it was I was looking for and I show him the shape I described to him the lace that I'm looking for the long sleeves all the different things and he was like you know what we don't have anything exactly like that here but I've actually designed all the dresses in this shop and the owner and the designer and so let me put you in a couple different things to give you an idea of what we have and sort of clarify what it is you're looking for and I can actually design for you a fully custom wedding dress and he was like you know because I've designed all of these dresses it's the same price range as buying a dress that I already have here and so what the guy did is he pulled a couple strapless dresses that had pretty much the silhouette that I was looking for and the material the lace that I was looking for and he had me try those on with a lace bodysuit underneath so essentially it's just this bodysuit that covers your arms and you put that on first and then you put the lace strapless dress on on top of it and the goal here was just to sort of give me an idea of what it would look like with sleeves if we had sort of the base silhouette and fabric correct and then he would create a dress that had the modifications I wanted with the sleeves obviously built in rather than it being two pieces and the dress that I again kind of ended up with was I think the very first one I tried on at that salon and I just fell in love with the lace with the fit the way that it felt on me and as I was wearing it even though it was just sort of like this dress with a dress underneath I just felt the closest thing that I had felt at any of the shops to a bride and I just felt so beautiful in it and I loved it so so much the lace in this dress was like a Chantilly lace and it was this really pretty delicate lace but it was also very billowy and I could totally envision what it would be like with the changes that we needed to make I left that shop pretty much knowing like I'm probably gonna go back here and choose this route but I did still have one other appointment for that day. And so I was like, you know what? I still wanna to go to this salon because it was another fairly big salon and just see if there's something out there that already exists that I want to get because the idea of creating a custom dress was exciting, but also a little nerve wracking. So I'm like, I'm not really gonna see the dress until maybe like a couple months before the wedding. And so I just wanted to make sure there was nothing else out there that I loved even more. And so I went to that next appointment, didn't really find anything. and then. And I had basically two weeks before I needed to come back and start the process and so I was like you know what? I'm just gonna take these next two weeks to really search everything online and just make sure there's nothing else that I want and so that's what I did I scoured the internet and was not able to find anything that had just all of those elements that I wanted and my mind kept going back to this dress that I had tried on I kept looking at the photos and so we scheduled the appointment and two weeks after that initial appointment we went back to start that process and at this point I think it was like the end of May so that first appointment we took all my measurements we talked through every single detail of the dress and the changes I wanted to make to sort of like the existing template of the strapless dress I 
wanted to make like a longer train because it wasn't super long on that initial dress. And then the fit was pretty much right in terms of the silhouette. But again, I wanted that fitted up to almost like my hips and then the soft flow out and it hugged down just a little bit lower than I wanted it to. And so we were going to change that when he designed the dress, um, obviously talking through having the sleeves and how they would flow into the dress and wanting like a little bit of the scalloping instead of the clean line and just the buttons on the sleeves, like all the things we wrote down every last detail, took every last measurement. He drew out a sketch for me of what the dress was going to look like. And I just felt so good about it because I felt like everything I was communicating in terms of changes I wanted to make to the dress that he was really understanding them and not only understanding them, but also able to sort of put them on paper and draw them out and show them to me to reflect them back to see like, okay, this is what you're talking about, right? And so even though it was nerve wracking to commit and pay for a dress that I hadn't seen, I felt very confident that he was understanding the vision and that he was gonna bring it to life. And you know, you'll see what happens. But at that point, all was good. So from there, basically all there was to do was to wait. He said that the dress was gonna be ready mid-September and that from there we would have the normal appointments to do final fittings and make any last minute adjustments that we needed to make. And mid-September was two months before the wedding. We got married November 13th, so we were still gonna have two full months to make those changes, which I felt good about. And we did exchange a couple texts back and forth, just clarifications on different details with the dress and updates and stuff like that. But like I said, pretty Pretty much from there on out all there was to do was wait now here's where the story gets crazy so it was probably the first or second week of September and I texted the guy the shop owner just to check in and see like you know how's the dress coming along we're almost at mid September and he texts me back and he was like oh yeah there's been delays with some of the shipping stuff just because of everything going on with COVID but we're hoping that the dress is gonna be ready next month at this point, we're in September. Next month would have been October, which was the month before the wedding. And he wasn't even saying it will be ready next month. He was saying, we're hoping it'll be ready next month. And so I was like, uh, well, the wedding is November, so how's that gonna work? And he was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't always save the names of brides in my phone and I wasn't near my desk. And so when you texted, I thought you were a different bride whose wedding isn't until a couple months out. As for your dress, we're all good to go. It's set to come in next week. So let's make an appointment for late next week. And so we ended up making an appointment for September 23rd. So for this appointment, I ended up going down there with my mom. So we drove down. It's about 45 minutes south down in San Jose. And then one of my friends and bridesmaids, Kristen, ended up coming as well because she lives in the area. And she brought her daughter, Charlie Girl, who was one of my flower girls. And then my friend and bridesmaid, Courtney, ended up joining as well because that was actually her birthday. And so she had the day off work and she's like, I want to come. And so we show up to the appointment and I was definitely a little bit nervous because I was just like, oh, like it's been four months since we had this appointment and I just hope that everything came together okay. But in my head, the worst case scenario was that maybe some of the things we had talked about weren't quite right and that we were still gonna have time to make those adjustments. But in my mind, that was like the worst case scenario. Little did I know. So we go into the salon and the store owner is like, there's your dress over there. It's hanging up in the dress bag. He had it waiting for me in the fitting room. And he was like, you know what? We got it back. I got it back from my manufacturers because he's the designer. He doesn't actually like make them. And he's like, I think there was a couple things from the design notes that maybe they didn't quite understand, but they're easy fixes, just little things here and there. So we're gonna work on it. And so I'm like, okay, I was a little bit nervous, but I just take a deep breath and I had to go to the bathroom. So. I went upstairs to use the restroom and as I'm walking down stairs, my friends had arrived, so Kristen and Charlie Girl and Courtney, and I hear them all talking to my mom and it doesn't sound good. And so I just take another deep breath and I walk downstairs and they had taken the dress out of the bag. And guys, it was the exact same thing that I had tried on four months before. I'm talking the exact same sample strapless dress that everybody had been trying on along with the bodysuit. There was nothing that had changed. And the guy is trying to tell us, you know, 
well, they just made, you know, a new version of this strapless dress and Kristen's walking up to it and she's like, really? Cause there's like snags on it and it's dirty. This kind of looks like the same one she tried on. That's, you know, the sample one that everybody tries on and they're just like, you know, deep breaths. And I think I'm just a little bit in shock. Like I wasn't super emotional or anything at first. I think I was just trying to take it all in. And I was just confused. I was like, what happened? And we're all trying to ask him like, you know, what happened? And obviously there truly are a lot of delays happening right now with shipping. And so we're like, did, you know, the materials not come in time? Did you forget to place the order? Like, did you just completely forget about this project? Like, just, tell us what happened, like help us understand what happened here so that we can try to work toward some sort of solution. He basically was just super wishy-washy and was not able to give us a straight answer as to what happened. He was like, guys, I'm trying. And we're like, well, just explain it to us. And he was like, oh, like I'm trying to trying to fix it. And he's like, let me just have some time to fix it. And we're like, okay, well, we've already trusted you with four months of our time. And this is only a six month engagement. So we don't have a lot more time to offer. So like, how quickly can you have these changes done? And he was like, give me a month. And we're like, we can't risk another month. Like if you're saying come back in in a week or let's work on it, you know, and the more we talked to him and the more wishy-washy he was and the more unable he was to just give us a straight answer, the more all of us were just like, we can't continue to work with this guy. Like this is so bizarre. We have no idea what's happening here. And then it's just starting to hit me that I'm like, you know what? I am at this point, like seven weeks out from the wedding. And I thought I was gonna have my dream wedding dress that I literally got to design and select every last detail of. And now I'm pretty much left at square one with nothing and we're like racking our brains. Like, can we go shopping somewhere else? And in my head, I'm like, there's not really enough time to order a dress. And I'm just kind of like getting hit with all of this. And Kristen and Courtney are trying to comfort me, but also trying to like interact with this guy and figure it out. And my mom is like trying to get a refund because she had already paid the deposit on the dress. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm realizing like, I'm not gonna have anything to take out of this store. And as much as it was not a good experience working with him, like the dress was still the closest thing I had found to what I wanted. And I hadn't found any other lace that was the same as this lace. That was something that I loved. And so basically we ended up seeing if we could take that strapless dress, the sample one, and he ended up giving it to us without an argument for free. And we did get our money back and I didn't really know what I was gonna do with that dress, but I was just like, I just feel like I can't leave here empty handed. Like I need to have something, some sort of a pathway to hopefully getting something figured out. And so we just left the salon with the dress and tried to regroup. Now, mind you, as all of this is happening, Tyler was actually gone on his bachelor party and he was off on a boat with his guys and he's texting me. He's like, hey babe, how did the dress appointment go? And I'm just like sobbing and crying, but I'm like, here's like his fun wedding event. Like I get bridal showers and all this stuff. And this is like his one thing, his bachelor party. So I don't want to be like telling him about all of this while he's having this fun weekend. And so I was just like, you know, it didn't go as expected, but we're figuring it out. And at this point, it's just like hitting me. I'm like crying, I'm sad, I'm trying to figure out what it is we're gonna do. And I'm so thankful that I had Kristen and Courtney and my mom there because they just went into problem solving mode. Like I think I was kind of stuck in the emotion of it all in that moment, but they were like, well, let's figure this out. Let's figure out how we can solve this. They're both on the phone figuring all of this out. And I'm just kind of in my feels. And Charlie girl, the sweetest little thing, again, she was one of my flower girls. She's just like comforting me and hugging me because she saw me crying and sad and she's like it's gonna be okay and I don't know if you guys ever do this but I ended up taking a picture with her of me just hugging Charlie girl when I was crying because I was like I believe that this is all gonna get worked out and it's gonna be okay but I want to remember this moment just so that when it does all work out and when God provides and this is all behind us I can remember what I was feeling so Courtney and Kristen are on the phone because they had asked me like what do you need today and I was like I just need to feel like I'm making progress toward some sort of a solution and so Kristen gets off the phone and she's like okay I found this bridal salon that's closer back to where I live and they have availability for an appointment today they have a big selection it's this beautiful salon so why don't we just go look and see what they have and so we start making plans to pick something up for lunch and then drive back out that way and then Courtney gets off the phone a couple minutes later with her grandma which her grandma's amazing she helped do decor stuff for our wedding and Courtney had asked her grandma like do you know of anybody who is a seamstress who could possibly help with this 
and her grandma reminded her about another wedding that Courtney had just been in. So like a month before, Courtney was a bridesmaid for another friend of hers. And basically that bride was a COVID bride who had to push off her wedding. And in between the time when she bought her dress and she actually wore her dress, she lost 40 pounds. And when you lose that much weight, the alterations really aren't just alterations. You actually have to take the dress completely apart and basically put it back together and remake it. And so Courtney was like, oh my goodness, Case, like I was just in this wedding and this girl, her friend, had gone to this seamstress and she was like, this seamstress was amazing. She was like, Casey, this lady literally took her dress completely apart. It was unrecognizable and she created this whole new dress and put it back together and she was like it was so stunning and you never would have known and this was just like the best lady ever so why don't we just call her to see if there's anything that she can do so we look it up and we end up finding out that this seamstress lady her name is janice that she actually worked out of her little shop that was located directly behind the other bridal salon that Kristen had found that we were already on our way to and that was the first moment where i was like okay god has his hand in this I'm gonna try not to like worry and stress and let's just go to the appointment. And so we're driving to the bridal salon and we end up calling Janice and I explain to her what happened. And of course I start crying again because the reality of it is hitting me again. And I'm like, man, I don't have a dress and my wedding is seven weeks away. And she was like, I am super, super booked up, but I can hopefully try to get you in for something next week. And I'm like, oh, cause in my mind, I'm just like, we don't have another week to spare. But I was like, okay, well, we're gonna actually be in the bridal salon in front of you. And so if you happen to have anything open up, even like five minutes to look at it and just tell us if like you can do something or not, then that'd be super appreciated. But if not, let's definitely book that appointment for next week. And she was like, okay, well, if you're gonna be out here, let's make it happen. Just come over when you're here and we'll take a look at it and we'll see what we can do. So we get to her studio and she has me try on the strapless dress along with the bodysuit and just explain all the different changes I wanted to make. The first thing she did is she just walked up to me. She put her hands on my shoulder and she was like, let's just take a deep breath. And she was like, it's all gonna be okay. And she was so comforting and so assuring. And and honestly, from that moment, I just felt so much more at ease. And so we're talking through the changes and she's like, I can definitely do this. Like I can create this dress for you, but our biggest challenge is going to be that we need more lace. She's like, I have a couple things I have in mind that might be pretty similar. And there's different, you know, wholesale lace supply places that I can go to look at to see if we can find this, but I haven't seen anything quite like this. So we're gonna need to see what we can do. And so before we left her studio, we did go into the front bridal salon just so I could try things on and see what was available in case I needed to order something like ready-made and I tried on dresses and they were beautiful dresses but you can tell my face in the pictures I was just so sad so I'm like they're beautiful dresses and if this is what I end up wearing on my wedding then you know what I'm still marrying Tyler at the end of the day so it's gonna be fine but you could just tell I was sad because I'm like that's not the dress or the style that I wanted and so we end up contacting the owner from the previous shop to see if it was going to be possible for him to get us more lace and then I also asked about basically having a new version of that strapless dress created just so it was a new one that didn't have the little snags and wasn't dirty from people trying it on and it seemed like he was maybe going to be able to do those two things for us but just the way the conversations were going we knew that we couldn't really a hundred percent rely on anything that he was saying. And so Janice was like, reach out to him, see what he can do. I'm gonna do my own research looking at these different shops and looking even on like Etsy and online to see what I can find and let's go from there. And she was like, based off of the amount of work that needs to be done to create this dress, here's the date that's like the final date that we can get started in order to have it done by your wedding. And it was like that first week of October. Long story short, it ended up being this two week period that felt like forever of back and forth conversations with this guy where he was saying, okay, I can get you more lace and they're making a new version of the strapless dress, but it'll probably be like a week and a half. And then he kept going back and forth as to it'll be ready this day. Well, actually it'll be ready this day. And then saying it was ready and I'm like, great, like I'll pay to have it overnight so we can have it sooner. And he's like, well, I need to see if it's actually ready yet. And just not getting any clear answers from him. Meanwhile, Janice had found a lace that was pretty similar, but it wasn't the exact same lace. And she's like, I think it could maybe work, but it's not gonna be the same as if you had that same lace. So basically our three options were best case scenario, he comes through with 
the new strapless dress and the extra lace. Our second or middle case scenario was that he has one or the other, so either a new strapless dress, in which case we could use the lace from the older version of the dress to do the sleeves and stuff, or he has just the lace, which we could use on sort of the base older dress. And then worst case scenario, he has neither of the two and we use the old version of the base dress and then this lace that Janice found, we buy that and work it all together. And so as we're waiting to see what was gonna happen, I had filled a handful of my friends slash bridesmaids in on what was happening and I was like, just pray that it all works out. And of course I know that a dress at the end of the day is just a material thing, but of course at the same time every girl looks forward to getting to wear that wedding dress you've always dreamed of and wanting to just feel beautiful on that day and I remember so specifically being on FaceTime with Heather one of my matrons of honor one time and we were just praying over it and she was just like you know what God just be preparing this dress be preparing Casey as a bride just as you prepare the bride of Christ for Christ and that you you know dress her in white and make her beautiful for yourself in that same way just allow all the details to come together to work out so that Casey can feel like a beautiful bride on her wedding day. And as Heather was praying for me, I was reminded of something that God spoke over me actually like seven, eight years ago now when I was studying abroad in London. And I wanna share more of this story in the future, but basically God connected me and my friend Kelly, who is also one of my matrons of honor, and a handful of other friends with this older couple in Brighton, England. And it was just this incredible time of sharing our testimonies and them praying over us and speaking over us. And when we left their house, the wife, her name was June, said to me, Casey, I felt God strongly impressing on me that you are going to be married and that you will be a beautiful bride and at the time it was like okay I wasn't really like questioning if I'd get married or not like I was 20 I think at the time um, but it was something that I held on to and then as the years went by of singleness and just walking through that journey it's something I went back to time and time again of like oh now I can see why maybe God made that because I didn't know it, but I was gonna enter into this long season of waiting where there would be times of discouragement. And those were hopeful words for me to hang on to. So as Heather's praying over me, that God would allow all the things to come together so that I would feel like a beautiful bride in my wedding dress, I was reminded of those words, words that I had hung on to so many times of just, you will be married, you will be married. And remembering the second part of that promise that says you will be a beautiful bride. And it just struck me in this moment of like, man, to me, this feels like, you know, this did not go how it was supposed to go. And this was like a huge hiccup in my plan as far as what I thought was going to happen for my wedding dress. But God is not surprised by this. And as much as this feels like, you know, a, how is this going to work out situation for me in this moment, God knew this was going to happen eight years ago when he spoke those words to me through June saying, you will be married and you will be a beautiful bride. And God's not surprised by this. It made me think of something I read in the book of Psalms years ago. I wanna read it to you now. So it's talking about the story of Joseph, which if you're familiar with that story, I've talked about it here on my channel and done Bible studies. But basically Joseph is sold into slavery by his brothers and that brings him to Egypt. And then he is working in the house of Potiphar but Potiphar's wife wrongfully accuses him of basically making sexual advances toward her. And this gets him thrown into prison. So he's sold into slavery by his brothers, thrown into prison, and all of that eventually leads to him being put into this position where he interprets a dream for Pharaoh's cupbearer, who is also in prison. And this elevates him to this position of second in command over all of Egypt. And God uses him in that position to basically prepare the land for a famine that was coming and through Joseph to save many lives. And so that's the story that's being referenced here in Psalm 105, verse 16. And it says, when he summoned a famine on the land and broke all supply of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. And I remember being so struck when I read that for the first time at just the realization that before God ever brought the famine upon Egypt, 
he had already prepared the provision. He knew this famine was gonna be coming, but before the people ever knew that, God had already prepared how he was going to provide for them in it. He was already setting the stage, already writing the story before anyone could even see the need. And I feel like God just encouraged me with this verse and just realizing like, man, all of this with the dress was a big surprise to me and not at all what I expected to happen, but it wasn't a surprise to God. And before I ever even knew there was gonna be this problem of being you know, a month and a half away from my wedding without a dress, before I even knew that problem was going to exist, God had already prepared the solution. And I just think about the fact that those two friends happened to be there, happened to be there on that day when everything happened with the dress. The fact that the appointment just so happened to be on Courtney's birthday and that she had the day off work and that she wanted to spend her birthday with me going to this dress appointment and that she was the one who had this connection to this other seamstress and that we were able to get an appointment with her that same day because she knew her through this other bride and the fact that Kristen was also there and Kristen is just somebody who was so good in that situation about empathizing with my emotion but also moving me from that like sadness and shock into like okay let's figure this out and kindly and respectfully but also firmly interacting with the guy at this first shop to try to like figure stuff out and just come up with a path forward like they were very key great people to have with me at that appointment and once again before i even knew there was going to be a problem God already had Janice there waiting to help me out and to create my dream wedding dress, which was exactly what she did. So I'd pretty much told myself and accepted in my heart that, you know what, we're not gonna get the new dress or the lace from this guy, but I had also resolved that, you know what, I do want to still go forward with Janice and even if we have to use the other lace, I want to create this dress that is gonna be what I actually want. I had kind of let go of the idea of ordering a different dress that was already available. I was like, you know what, this is still the closest thing to what I want. And I really trust that Janice, based off of what she's described to us, is going to be able to figure something out to help us get there. So the very last day that we could get the lace, the guy had told us, okay, it's gonna be ready at five. And we we're like, okay, we've kind of heard that a couple of times, so it may or may not happen. And like I said, I had kind of just let go of that. But then at 3.30 p.m. on that Friday, I get a call from Kristen and she was like, he says it's ready, both the lace and the new version of the strapless dress, and here's when he wants us to come pick it up. And she was like, you know, he just wants you to bring the old version of the dress, and then here's what he's gonna charge you for the new one he created and the lace. And even then we were both still like, Hopefully he's telling the truth, but then he ended up sending her pictures of it and she's like, okay, I think he's really serious this time. And so long story short, we got a new version of the strapless dress that was brand new and didn't have the snags or wasn't dirty. And we got 10 yards of extra lace, which was gonna be more than enough to do all the changes we needed to do. And it literally came on the very last possible day that it could come. And so from there, it was pretty much go time. But before I share that process of actually creating the dress, I did wanna give a quick side note and say, just cause I had a lot of friends ask me as I shared this story, like, how is this guy in business? Like, does he have good Yelp reviews? And I was like, literally all his reviews are like, 10 out of 10 or five out of five, or however Yelp does it. He has so many good reviews, but then after everything happened, I was like digging through them more. And I was able to find like three reviews that were sharing stories of something very similar to what I experienced of basically just like not coming through on what he promised at all. And really just evading giving an answer when he was asked like what happened and his responses to these reviews were basically just very very defensive and so i still don't know what happened with him but my best guess is that i think he does actually do really good work and his dresses were beautiful but then when maybe something doesn't work out either a mistake on his end or i don't know something out of his control maybe he just isn't or doesn't know how to be upfront about that and kind of just makes excuses and deflects. That's my best guess. Again, I still don't really know, but on to the happy part of the story. My very first appointment with Janice was October 7th. And once again, I got married November 13th. So like a month before the wedding. And from that point forward, I had at least one, most times two appointments with her every single week. Mind you, this is the final month before the wedding, so things with planning are very busy. That was also the month I had both bridal showers and my bachelorette party, so it definitely added 
a little extra stress there in the end. But the amazing part of it is that I essentially got to help design my dream wedding dress. We're talking about like down to the placement of each piece of lace, how many buttons I wanted on the cuff, how I wanted the back lace part to come in, the exact shape, how long I wanted the train, like everything. And guys, I'm telling you, Janice was the most masterful seamstress. Seriously, I felt like she was my fairy godmother giving me my Cinderella dress. Literally every time I went in for an appointment, I was like, I just wanna hug you because not only was she making everything come to life, but she was seriously just the most comforting, reassuring, encouraging presence throughout all of it. And I genuinely enjoyed all of the time that I got with her each and every single one of my appointments. I will leave her email down below in the description in case you live in the area and need a seamstress for your wedding dress. And so it was just appointment after appointment and Courtney came with me to probably almost every single appointment, same with my mom. And then once Heather got here from Germany, she ended up coming for a couple appointments as well. Anna came for an appointment, so it was fun to just have friends in that process, literally getting to see my dress being made before our eyes. As amazing as it was to get to basically create exactly what I wanted, it was also extremely nerve wracking because I literally did not see my dress fully put together, fully done until the Wednesday before the wedding. So we got married on Saturday and I didn't get to see my dress fully done until that Wednesday. So it was very nerve wracking. What she did to this dress was just incredible. She literally took it apart, took the whole skirt apart so that we could recreate a longer train. So there was a point when I had like the bodice of the dress, but not the train. And she created the sleeves, she put buttons on the dress, she made the cuffs, she made the fit to be exactly what I wanted it to be. And I just, she did such an amazing job. I'm truly so thankful for her. I'll insert a little montage here of just the different appointments so you can see a little bit of that progression. So let's talk about everything that you um, want to do. So freaking so pretty, Kate. Oh my gosh. So I remember one of the final appointments as my dress was starting to come together and I was seeing it and I was just so excited because it was exactly what I was wanting. I remember talking to Janice at one of those appointments and just saying how it probably wouldn't have turned out this way if the original guy had done sort of what he was supposed to do in the beginning. And I kind of feel like I was always meant to work with you. Like working with her was truly just such a blessing and a joy. And I feel like she was just able to create something that was even better than I had imagined. And I had this moment where I thought, man, I kind of feel like God always meant for me to work with Janice and to have her create my wedding dress. But in order to get to that, I had to go through everything that I went through with that guy and with the first shop, because if we hadn't gone through that, we wouldn't have had, you know, the dress, like the base piece of the dress, that lace, or even really the idea or realization that it was possible to create a custom dress. And if that had not happened and Courtney hadn't been there that day, then I would have never known about Janice. And so it was just this realization that this is what was always supposed to happen. But in order for that to happen, I had to go through all this stressful, disappointing stuff with the first place. And just tying that back to the Joseph story, like God's purpose was always to use Joseph to save many lives, to be a leader during that time of famine. Like that verse in Psalms says, God even sent him ahead to prepare for that. But in order to get there, he had to go through being sold into slavery and thrown into prison. And those are things that I'm sure to him in the moment would have felt like, man, this was not a part of the plan. It was not supposed to go this way. But in fact, it always was a part of the plan, God's plan to get him where he needed to be so that God could use him in the way that he had purposed to use him. And again, I know that this is a wedding dress. It's a material thing that does not in any way compare to a man being used by God 
to save a nation from a famine. I'm aware of that, but I think the principle that I learned through this experience and is reflected in scripture in the life of Joseph is this, that God is sovereign. That when things happen that feel like they weren't supposed to happen to us or they feel to us like something is going wrong, those things are never a surprise to him. And sometimes he uses those unexpected things to move us along in the plot points of the story he's already written to get us in the position where his plans for us that were always his plans can come to fruition. And so I just wanted to share that crazy story of designing my dream wedding dress one to just share with you guys what happened but also to to hopefully offer that encouragement of that truth through it that whatever situation you're in if there's maybe things happening right now that are not at all what you expected or not at all what you planned or just feel like they're a deviation from what was supposed to happen to just be reminded of the truth that God is in control he's not surprised by any circumstance and he uses all circumstances to accomplish his purposes which are always for his glory and our good. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and then also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.